Hello everyone, this is the BBN and we're bringing you the sweet science. Today we're going to be focusing on Amir Khan. Now before we go any further, I would like to say I actually like this fighter. He has blazing speed as far as his hands are concerned. He's an admirable individual to root for if you're a fan of his to a degree um like with all of our favorite athletes or musicians or you know anyone that is in any kind of creative arts because boxing is an art form do not get that confused we tend to go really hard for the people who we admire to the point where we like them more than other individuals. And if you are a Amir Khan fan, I can understand that you think that he can beat some of the better fighters. But I'm going to explain to you why he will fall to most of the best fighters. And it's, it's partly due to him and it's partly due to the training. Like first... He lacks defense. He was with Freddie Roach. Freddie Roach is a trainer who he usually gets with fighters after they have already made themselves established. And he comes in and he does his Freddie Roach thing. And the majority of what Freddie Roach works on is your offensive capabilities. If you get with Freddie Roach, you will become a better offensive fighter. That is, that is fact. That that is not something that can be questioned. That is fact. You get with Freddie Roach, your offense will improve. You will become a better puncher. You will strike at more angles, which is extremely important. But the problem is, when you get with Freddie Roach, he doesn't seem to think defense and the art of not getting hit is important. Uh, let's digress for one moment and think about the Pacquiao fight when he fell to Marquez. Now, Marquez is a counterpuncher, as we all know. And what did Pacquiao do? Pacquiao, like in the previous fights, thought that his speed and his aggressiveness and his ability to be unpredictable was going to allow for him to take advantage of the slower Marquez. But in this particular fight, Marquez was able to time him. And timing beats speed. That is what the theme basically around why Mr. Ramir Khan loses is timing beats speed. Everybody thinks, or and I'm going to say everybody, but many decafs think that having the ability to throw many punches in a short amount of time allows for you the comfort of receiving wins. It doesn't. So, Juan Marquez was able to time Pacquiao. Pacquiao, who lacks, I'm not going to say head movement as much as defensive head movement only head movement Pacquiao really uses is to confuse while he's rushing in so he can get closer to you since his arms are shorter than most of his opponents and strike that's Pacquiao's head so Pacquiao, who was already a great offensive fighter, then gets with Freddie Roach, becomes a better offensive fighter. But 
even worse at being able to defensively protect himself. So now we get Amir Khan. Before Freddie Roach got with Amir Khan, or Khan got with Roach, Amir Khan had one loss. So now he gets with Freddie Roach. He ends up going up against Danny Garcia. He is outclassing Danny Garcia. Round after round. Throwing as many punches as possible. In a short amount of time. And then trying to get out of range. Which is a great strategy for somebody who can throw punches as, as, as quickly as he can but there's something to be said to have enough punching power to keep your opponent off of you now since Amir Khan does not have enough punching power to keep the opponent off of him by the second or third round the guy is starting to tie you see, when you come in and you throw six, seven punch combinations and you're doing the combinations basically flat footed, you allow yourself or you afford your opponent the opportunity to counter you. You allow yourself the opportunity to get hit. So... While he's coming in and he's throwing these punches, which also at the at the at the rate that he fights at, I don't understand how he thinks he's gonna get to 12 rounds against elite competition. You know, when you get in the ring against elite competition and you fight every single round, balls out, and you refrain from taking breaks throughout the course of each round, you have to be in extremely good conditioning. Which it kind of seems that he has not been. So he has been taking losses. Now, with that being said, his defense, he needs to get with a defensive trainer. His new trainer, Virgil Hunter is also a good trainer. But when you have a fighter or you have an athlete or you have an entertainer or you have anyone that has been doing something 10, 15 years of their life and now you expect to come in and change all of their bad habits and in the course of a year, it's not going to, the course of six months, it's not going to happen. So, Amir Khan finds himself between the rock and the hard place. He's a really good offensive fighter. But he has no defense. And due to the fact that he lacks punching power, he can't keep people off of him. Since he can't keep people off of him, not only does he have to throw a lot of punches, but he also has to use the entire ring because he doesn't have the defensive capabilities to fight inside of the pocket. And he doesn't have the punching power to stop people from being on top of him. I know we love to see the best fighters fight the best fighters. That's what we want. People screamed about the Mayweather Pacquiao for years. We have the Sean Porter Keith Thurman fight coming up. We hope somebody will go fight Kell Brook or Kell Brook will go fight somebody. We want to see the elite athletes go up against each other. I, for one, as much as I like Amir Khan, I do not think he's one of the elite fighters. I think he's just a fighter with the biggest mouth. And his handlers are not protecting him well. His handlers need to come to him and say, look, you cannot have this fight or that fight 
until you work on this part of your game and that part of your game. Because we want to come into the fight. And we want to have more than just a slim chance. The Canelo fight I don't really blame him for. Actually the Canelo fight is entirely his handler's fault is my point. I don't blame him for losing the Canelo fight for the reasons in which I explained about his deficiencies in the ring. He lacks the power to keep Canelo off of him. And he's going to have to run for 12 rounds. Now when I say run, I don't use the word run like uh, people who don't like Mayweather's style of defense use run. I use run as you have to keep your feet moving. Because the other guy is just bigger than you, stronger than you, hits harder than you, and you cannot fight in the pocket. I don't mean run like he's scared and he's running around the ring. Because Amir Khan will stand in front of you and throw punches and give you the opportunity to trade with him. That's why he keeps getting knocked out. His handlers need to drill into him. We are not going to make these fights with these elite athletes if you aren't going to become an elite athlete yourself. The money's good, but making money for one or two fights, it's not going to beat making money for 10 to 15. With that being said, Amir Khan has to win his next fight. He has no choice. He cannot lose his next fight. Losing his next fight is basically possibly the end of his career I personally think that he should go fight an AB Adrian Broner my reasoning for thinking that he should fight Adrian Broner is Adrian Broner needs a win just like he needs a win Adrian Broner is probably the only guy that he can fight right now lose and his career isn't ended Adrian Broner is a guy that doesn't like to throw a lot of punches Adrian Broner is a guy that he won't have to run from as much because Adrian Broner really isn't a stalker. Adrian Broner likes to also stand inside of punching range and not throw punches. All of these things are tailor-made for Amir Khan. Absolutely tailor-made. Adrian Broner also doesn't come on strong until the end of the fight. So that means that through the middle rounds, Amir Khan can rest some instead of fighting all out from the first bell to the last. Those are just our thoughts here at the BBN, Bronx Broadcasting Network.